scientists when they say that uh, they rely on uh, intuition for various uh, discoveries. Hmm. That can be passed upon us? Importance of intuition in our life, that is because very... Businessmen, they rely on intuition. Gut instinct, that's pretty much what it is, you know. So what what is gut instinct? Has anybody analyzed? Everybody uses it. But has, has anybody analyzed it, you know, when, when does gut instinct come to you? Some people say that it comes to them in their dreams. So yeah, we, we can discuss that. We can talk about that. We are rolling. Okay, good. Yeah. So let's, let's start. If uh, you had any questions or should I go ahead? Uh, it's, it would be good if, if you uh, introduce me or should I introduce myself? Okay, so I'll. And yeah. So it would be really nice if you could share with us about who I am and what I do. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, okay. Okay. Very good. Yeah. So, um, okay. namaste, everybody. It's. Uh, wait. Sorry. Wait. sorry? Wait. Yeah, we'll wait. Okay. Yeah. Namaste, everybody. I would like to introduce myself. I am Dr. Jody A. Deshore. I practice. Uh, naturopathic medicine in uh, the United States, specifically New Jersey. I have my own clinic, which uh, works with all ages and uh, mostly with chronic illness, with autism, with autoimmune issues, with uh, cancer, Lyme disease, mold and biotoxin exposure, and uh, chronic inflammation processes that go on in the body. Um, I like to practice, or in fact, that is what I do practice, is clinical herbalism. Uh, advanced cellular homeopathy from Switzerland. We do a lot of European and German biological medicine. I'm, I'm also board certified in bioenergetic medicine. So it's, it's pretty much a completely natural plant-based biological approach to any, um, any illness that I see in my practice. So that, that's what I do. Um, BioNexus Health is my clinic and um, you know, feel free to look it up if you like. There is a lot more information on there about me. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I forgot to mention that my background training is allopathic. It's, um, I specialize, used to specialize in uh, pediatric neurology. So along the way, I decided to change my path. So I always say that, you know, I was a peds neuro in my past life. What changes do you see with this, the new things that you have discovered? How does this change children and how does that help children? Okay. I, that, that would be a very long story. Okay. But, you know, along the way, due to personal circumstances with myself and my son uh, and intensive efforts with allopathic medicine, pretty much lost faith. Uh, we didn't get a whole lot of help from the allopathic side in spite of myself being involved in the field. So it, you know what they say, uh, most people walk around very comfortable in who they are, what they are doing. You know, people fall into a rut of routine. Only when you hit rock bottom. When you hit rock bottom, that is when your mind opens. So in order, so that, that's pretty much what happened to me. So in order for my mind to be wide open to different possibilities, like um, naturopathic medicine, you know, for, for a traditionally trained physician, it's very difficult to switch to naturopathic. You know, there, there's a lot of skepticism. But uh, fortunately for me, my mom brought us up very naturally. Um, minimum vaccinations, mostly home remedies, so I had that in my, in my genes, I guess, you know. And uh, I naturally gravitated towards holistic methodology as an option to help myself and my son recover from some very, very near-death difficult times. So since then, what I've learned from our experiences, my experiences and my son's, I've been able to help hundreds uh, of children and thousands of people um, I'm currently treating about uh, patients from about 27 countries around the world. So it's, you know, it's been an immense privilege and a learning experience. And had it not been for naturopathic, all plant-based biological approaches, I, I would not be here today. 
you know, that's what. The world is opening up to uh, spiritual herbalism. That's what the world is opening up to. And you mentioned you were in six months in coma. Yes, almost six months I was out of it. And um, uh, once again, you know, the, the, uh, the old intuitive sayings from, from our old, you know, learned masters, they say that anytime something, any gift is about to be given to you, a price has to be paid. So once I recovered, it was almost like my, my mind expanded. It was uh, absolutely amazing. It was almost like I got back in touch. You know, whatever part of mine, my mind was corrupted, so to speak, was uh, beyond expansion. It was um, amazing authenticity. I was able to get in touch with my inner self. My uh, innate abilities blossomed. In fact, th they keep blossoming now. Uh, I found myself to be very close to plant and animal kingdom. Uh, I found my uh, energetic and intuitive abilities blossomed, and it's, it's the best experience. Can you give an example of your intuitive abilities that there's quite a few. Um, one example, you know, it's, um, I'll keep it short. The, some of the things that came to me that I've learned is about the uh, different dimensions. You know, like we live in a, in a 3D world, right? There is 4D, there's 5D. As you advance with your uh, spiritual knowledge, it, it is possible to move on to 4D and 5D dimensions. And um, there are you know, different kinds of souls. There is actually research done by, you know, there is a phenomenal author, uh, Michael, I forget his last name, begins with a G, but he has a couple books. He is a clinical psychologist. He's, he's done uh, hypnosis research, uh, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. Michael so <clears throat> I think so, I, yeah, th that's exactly him, yes. So uh, the thing is, you know, there is only one truth. So if, if you look at Yogananda, if you look at Osho, if you look at Guruji, they all speak the same truth because truth is there's only one truth. So um, what I learned was actually multi-pronged. Uh, uh, what was revealed to me was about advanced souls, intermediate souls, and beginner souls. You know, what is a, uh, what is a, a soul contract? Um, how children, for example, children who are ill, children who are on the spectrum, uh, they can have innate gifts that can be unlocked. There is, um, then I learned to communicate with, with plants and animals. Uh, telepathy, intuition, uh, energetic sensing, the bioenergetic field, we all have, have an electromagnetic field, pretty much uh, quantum biology and quantum physics. So where quantum biology expands your mind, quantum biology ultimately blends into quantum physics, and quant physics is the language of the universe, isn't it? So being able to connect with my inner being was where most of the information comes from, where most of the intuition comes from. So it, it's completely scientific. Um, when they say that all the answers are within you, that's not something to be taken lightly. That is a journey to be embarked upon. And uh, people who are skeptics, who cares? You know, it's, it's your individual journey. And honestly, when people, when all the doors close, and they see one door of natural approaches, intuitive approaches, opening you know, bioenergetic medicine, people walk through the door because they don't have any other choices. And that's happened to most of my patients. You know, they've tried, they've spent uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars you know, uh, for their children and, uh, or for their own health, and nothing seems to be helping. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's all palliative, it's all Band-Aids. And then they, they hear about me and they come and, and you know, there's proof positive. Like w within, within a couple months, they start seeing results that they haven't seen in 14, 15 years. In fact, um, I talk about uh, uh, Guruji all the time. So I actually have patients in Jerusalem, in Lithuania, Russia, Ukraine, Poland, uh, South America, Europe, North America, of course, all chronically ill, 
families with children or themselves, and uh, they every morning they listen to uh, Guruji on YouTube, and they are you know meditating and they are planning on attending the um, happiness course. So that's that's the the influence of um, Indian spirituality all over the world, right? I mean, in India they say you know is where science meets spirituality. So everybody knows Indians are like phenomenal when it comes to science and math. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be half Indian. So that, that is a, a very important part of me, genetically as, as well as um, culturally. It's, it, it's a very rich culture. Do you think, uh, you, you have been mentioning about intuition, and uh, uh, does this play a very important role in early stages of children and their own childhood too, if they were to learn to access and to understand what kind of effect it would have on them? Children, I find, have an innate ability to look within. You know, they're not corrupted by everyday routines, you know, keeping up with the Joneses, um, going through the rat race, right, hamster wheel that, that adults go through. So yes, uh, children, if they are trained at an early age to understand what the brain is capable of at that crucial phase of development, that will give them benefits beyond their lifetime. You know, uh, quantum physics calls this as archetypes. You, you, you carry your archetypes with you through different lifetimes. These are the innate, beautiful, spiritual uh, abilities that are for the greater good of mankind that can be useful to uh, humankind in every lifetime of yours. You, know, you, you become healers, you become scientists, you, you pretty much contribute to humanity. Uh, as most spiritual leaders say, uh, any gifts that you're born with or any gifts you acquire, they're not for you, they are meant for the bigger good. They are meant for the betterment of humanity. So children, if they acquire intuitive abilities, it not only gives them self-confidence, it not only helps them make uh, decisions in an awakened state versus you know, insane, uh, what is the world nowadays? There's insane competition. Everybody is running after the, the mighty dollar. Whereas when you look at intuitive children, they always take a step back. I, I have quite a few intuitive children in, um, in my practice. Uh, and that reminds me of uh, two stories, if I may, right? Kyle, if you're listening, uh, props to you. <laughs> but uh, Kyle was always different, absolutely brilliant in his studies, had Asperger's, uh, which is like in a very high functioning autism. And, uh, his whole life, his teachers did not understand him. You know, they would say, like for example, math. They would say, you have to show all the steps in order for us to, to, to you know, give you credit for that or give you marks. And he would say, but I'm giving you the answer. I don't need to go through four steps. So they would just you know, take away his points. And so his whole life he was, you know, I already, I see the numbers. I see the answer, it just comes to me. So uh, long story short, he went to a Ivy League uh, technical university in the US. He managed to get admission. And the first year, the teachers were the same. Ah, he's a little weird. And the, the second year, uh, Kyle borrowed $5,000 from his scientist uncle through his own research. This was years ago, like about five, six years ago. And his uncle is, uh, is really big into stem cells research, right? So he's a scientist, he knows this. So uh, what Kyle did was he invested, he did a lot of research in cryptocurrency, and he invested 5,000 in Bitcoins five years ago. So you can imagine where he is now today. <laughs> so this is a little kid, 18 years old, 18 years old. He completely relied on his intuition. Everybody laughed at him. They said, you're a little weird, you're on the spectrum, you know, what are you talking about in you know, online currency? What the heck is that? Nobody knows. That's one. Then I had a kid, um, Johnny, 
severely autistic, nonverbal, right? And I heard that his uh, neighbor's husband was leaving the, the driveway and a garbage truck came and killed him. So he, you know, hit the car and he pretty much died on the spot and it was very tragic. You know, this, the, the, he was a young father of two. So my patient's mother tells me that uh, Johnny started hammering on the window. Uh, th they have like four or five houses uh, prior to the tragedy house. So she said, you know, Johnny started hammering on the window very loudly. So she came upstairs to see what's going on. Uh, and uh, Johnny was, was taking two of his trucks, not a car and a truck, which is okay, two of his trucks and crashing them together. He kept doing that and then banging on the window. He kept doing that and banging on the window. This was before the accident. So Johnny has had a lot of intuitive uh, foresight. Uh, one last case that I'd like to, and this is not my patient, this is something that um, uh, my education and research um, I, I did my postdoctoral in uh, neurosensory integration from University of Southern California, and one, one of the research subjects was um, blind. And uh, this kid could, uh, was so intuitive that he was, he was self-taught pretty much. He was just you know, naturally intuitive. He was able to echolocate. He would ride a bicycle on a crowded street completely fully negotiating, you know, like, like bats, right? Um, bats echolocate. And that's, and uh, also dolphins, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, right? They make those clicking sounds. So this, this kid was able to uh, echolocate, you know, his, his mom and dad took videos, and it was, it was fantastic. That, that is... one video of that on the YouTube. The echolocation, yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah. yeah. There's a dustbin in front of him, and then, you know... He goes past, yeah. yeah. Yes. Part of living intuition process, and they demonstrate abilities which are which are so far fetched. What was your impression of that? And how would you explain this in the context of, uh, you know, science? Right. So uh, the abilities to me were not far fetched. Um, having a lot of intuitive abilities, you know, uh, and uh, medical intuitives are uh, very well known in Europe. Also in the United States, you know, there's skepticism everywhere in the world. It's not just in, in one country per se. But intuition is, uh, and spirituality, um, quantum science is becoming more and more popular and acknowledged. Not even, I mean, who cares about popular? It's getting more and more understood that that is where the answers are. The answers are within. The answers are in us, you know, having a collective consciousness mentality. If the, if the earth is supposed to move higher to a higher vibrational plane, we need to encourage abilities like intuition. Uh, in fact, I was mentioning yesterday that Guruji has seen almost 100 years into the future. He has you know, phenomenal foresight and he's, you know, the, the, the programs that, that he has instituted. So uh, in how do I regard uh, what was your question? You, how, you, you, how can you explain, explain. this in, in a scientific context? Okay, explaining it in a scientific context is your mind, body, spirit, consciousness. Okay. So uh, mind and body are your um, real-time reality. Your subconscious mind and your supraconscious mind are the two important aspects of your inner being that is important for intuition. Um, so scientifically explaining, I, I would like to take kind of an, an opposite approach, right? The opposite approach would be there is a lot of digitalization. You know, every child is on the iPad, on cell phones, it's constantly, continuously, right? Now, there is noxious gases, there is electromagnetic frequencies that are emitted, and they're all around us. There's Wi-Fi, there's routers, there's boosters, right? There's, you know, dirty electricity as well because not all of the outlets are grounded. Now, these interfere with our natural. Every um, living thing on the planet, and this, this has been scientifically proven over and over again, uh, mostly German uh, scientists, 
every living thing on the planet has its own electromagnetic signature, right? In fact, within your body, every organ has its own electromagnetic signature. Your immune system, as you're growing, as you're born, it memorizes the electromagnetic signature of everything, the germs, the my, uh, any kind of microbes, you know, like bacteria, viruses, yeast, funguses, uh, parasites, your own organs. That is how your immune, both the branches, your innate and acquired, that is how your immune system becomes so powerful, right? So when, when I use energy medicine to evaluate what is going on within the body, that is what I do. You know, it's called kinesiology, and we uh, access the patient's information from their immune system. Uh, and this is bioenergetic. It means that the practitioner's bioenergetic field or the electromagnetic field that surrounds us connects with the patient's bioenergetic field. That is how that is done. And uh, I've had a few uh, patients that have gone behind my back and have run blood labs. And boom, you know, the same infections show up. Anything that I saw with, with my muscle testing, that shows up. I'm, I'm a level four uh, bioenergetic medicine practitioner. So from level one to level four. So that's many, many years of training. Uh, what, where this comes from, again, once again, it's the Rig Veda. That's where it comes from, pretty much. And Shiv Yoga. That's, that's where, you know, um, and I know Guruji talks about Shiv Yoga as well. And, in, you know, he talks about the medicinal benefits. Um, so digitalization takes away anywhere there is excessive electromagnetic damage to the cells of the brain, uh, the, the processing slows down, and the immune system will not patrol cells, will not guard the cells that are damaged. Okay. That is why even children that are supposed to be very highly intuitive are not so. You know, otherwise, we would be seeing a lot. I mean, autistic children having gifts, right? Uh, you, you, you might have seen that Tom Cruise movie, right? He was, right, you know, he was a, a savant, and there are many kids, but does anybody ever look into that? They just say, oh, it's a freak of nature. No, it's not. It just happens to be that this person, <clears throat> because of sensory deprivation, you know, this person doesn't care if there is any kind of you know, uh, approval from society or if there is any emotional connection, if there is any peer pressure. This person is just in tune within with himself, and all of these gifts come out. So that, every child is capable of that. I, I wish, you know, parents spend so much money on classes um, and tutors and tuitions, and uh, I just wish, you know, parents would actually spend money on, um, or spend time and effort and resources, I should say, in um, educating their children or training their children's innate capabilities. That is what is going to maintain their health and um, I don't want to say wealth because wealth is automatic. What is money? Money is just energy from universe, right? You, you, you know, as long as, you know, children who are trained intuitively or they are gifted naturally with intuition, when they grow up, this is what I've seen. Like, for example, I gave you the example of Kyle, right? Is he hoarding the money? No. You know, one thing that I heard from one of my children is, is very important to me is that there, uh, he's like, you know, Dr. Jody, there's always enough for my need, but never for my greed. So anytime this child needs anything for his family, you know, he's, he's able to support them because of his intuitive gifts. But he'll, he'll never abuse the abundance given to him by the universe. And to have children speak the language of the universe at, at you know, like 10, 11, 12 years old, even younger, that is, that is really amazing. Like my own son, speaking of you know, children who are born with the capabilities, right? We were driving, and uh, he was, what, like four years old? Um, we saw a car accident in front of us. And uh, he was sitting in the back seat, and, and uh, you know, he's very intuitive. Uh, Brian and I are very much in tune with each other. So uh, we... What happened was when I was when I was seven and a half months pregnant, it was 2001, and um, my husband, in, 
in September, I was seven and a half months pregnant. And my husband used to work in World Trade Center. He was inside Tower 2. So the, it was a very traumatic time for me. I, I, I mean, it was beyond traumatic. I had no idea if he would be coming home. He did, you know, thank you, God, but he did, but obviously very affected. So all of the stress and the hormones and, and you know, I almost went into labor, but um, Brian held on, very strong personality. And he's been through so much and he's an advanced soul. I've learned so much from him. But uh, so his, I wasn't surprised when he said that. So we, we saw the accident, you know, there was a detour and we started driving. And he goes like, mom, I'm like, yeah. Uh, and I'm driving, you know, so he, he knows I'm not looking at him, right? Which is when, you know, kids feel at ease. I can say whatever I want. There's no eye contact, right? No pressure. So he's like, you know, mom, I, I hope that the, the family of the person who uh, was injured or even died looks like somebody died. Understand that, you know, um, the, it's just the body. The, the spirit never dies. So I was like, whoa, what? <laughs> you know? So that, that's, that's him. He's, he's been very highly intuitive. He was mercilessly bullied in school. You know, he was not able to walk for a while. He was limping, and there were issues with his bone marrow. And uh, other, you know, ignorant kids eating, you know, the, the standard American diet is SAD. It's a sad diet. So, so living on burgers and french fries, right, on, on their sad diets, they, they had no clue. You know, there's no awareness. There's no consciousness. They are not living in the present. You know, nothing. It's, it's just, just like puppets. So they, they would bully him, and some of them were actually caught. So uh, my town, mostly all good towns in the U.S., have a zero-tolerance policy. You know, you'll be thrown out. It'll go in, in your permanent record. So the guidance counselor in school, you know, we had a meeting. And this, uh, Brian was in fourth grade. And he says, you know, all, of course, I'm upset, and I'm like, blah, 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 blah. You know, the guidance counselor is blah, blah. You know, we, we, we are all having this heated discussion. And then he says, can I say something? We said, yes, Brian. He says, you know, I don't want anything to go in these boys' permanent record because they are good academically. They're just ignorant. They don't understand that I have uh, medical issues. I'm not doing it on purpose. So it's OK. You know, I'd, I'd like to forgive them. And we were all like, we were just, you know, staring at him like, oh, my gosh. So those four kids were there? In that, in yes. The yes. Okay. Yeah. And then they became very good friends after that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they understood why he said, you know, I forgive. You know, I, I don't think they had that depth of uh, emotional maturity. Yeah. So that's, that's what intuitive kids are. That's, that's a gift. I have one right at home. I've seen him from birth. And... Uh, Intuitive kids will be a gift to mankind, definitely. You know, what, uh, what has mankind done since we went to the moon? I mean, you know, we, we don't have light speed. We don't have maglev cars. You know, do we have kids with the brains? Absolutely. Half of them are misdiagnosed as autistic. You know, in the U.S., now it's one in 38 kids. Like, one in 38 boys, I should correct myself. Well, that is huge. That's, that's a crazy epidemic. And in my practice, I'm seeing, you know, at least 50% are false diagnosis. There is inflammation in the brain. There's, that is what I'm world-renowned for. I'm world-renowned for being able to recover kids on the spectrum, which, uh, which mostly may be a false diagnosis, you know, how to identify. And you know, I think every uh, child diagnosed autistic needs that opportunity. You can't, you know, they diagnose kids at two, two and a half years of age, right? That's, that's like giving them a life sentence, giving the family a life sentence. So you, you just need to identify, is it a true diagnosis or false diagnosis? And so many kids around the world, like I said, you know, 13, 14-year-old kids who are autistic are really doing well. I mean, I have patients everywhere, South Africa, uh, Israel, Eastern Europe, many countries, North America, many countries, and there's only two countries. But, uh, <laughs> have you seen children who were intuitive when they're small, when they're young of age. Um, what happens to these intuitive abilities as they grow older? Does it get crowded in the head? Or? Depends on their culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and depends if they are uh, neurotypical or neurologically challenged. 
And if they are neurologically challenged, if they have any neurological problem, how is the problem addressed? You know, are they, say if they have ADHD, right? They're heavily medicated. So they just walk around like zombies. So that pretty much life is over. It's very sad. Uh, intuitive abilities are uh, not recognized. Like for example, right, uh, I told you about Johnny. If his mom just came in the room and she saw him banging two cars together, she'll be like, oh, that's autistic behavior. So it's misunderstood. I think there should be, you know, they have so many schools for children with neurological issues where they are heavily drugged. Drug meaning, you know, psychiatric medications because they need to behave. So they end up like zombies. I wish there were schools that, um, and there is going to be, that explored, you know, more like with, with the natural methodology that I adopt to see if, if this is an accurate diagnosis, to proceed with naturopathic treatment Everybody improves. Okay, so the diagnosis of autism doesn't go away if it's very severe, right? But everybody, 100% of kids I treat, they improve. And it's all natural. There's no side effects, there's no nothing. So they deserve that chance. And I wish there were, uh, I really wish there were more schools for um, biointuitive training. Uh, biointuitive training is, is, you know, biological enhancement. Uh, of the gifts that the children already have. And even if the gifts are not overtly visible, I think every child has, has that potential to be able to develop uh, intuitive gifts. So biointuition will, will lead to bioregulatory skills. Biointuitive skills, I find, leads to bioregulatory skills. And these kids will never abuse fast food they will not abuse alcohol, cigarettes, no, no vices. You know, they'll make good husbands and wives because, because they live consciously, conscious living. Conscious living is a worldwide phenomena. You know, uh, becoming your authentic self. We need, you know, what's going to happen when, when we don't have genuine enlightened souls like Guruji anymore, you know, God, God bless his heart, but what do we do? We need... Uh, the children that you guys are training, it's fantastic. That's going to be his legacy. You know, they, they are going to be um, bright lights, right? I mean, I've, I've seen the uh, demonstration yesterday, and that, that was fantastic. It was, um, you know, the, the child was very grounded. And this is not for enhancing your grades in school. This is for enhancing your life. That's what that is. So that that's that's been my opinion of intuition. I think you know any anything when a, else. When a child is left you know, by intuition, so how what should the what is the role of the parent? You know how do they ensure that they are able to uh, retain. retain this I ability? Think, um, of as a colorable, I would like to add. Some parents are skeptical about the abilities that their children have developed. They don't know how to handle the fact that my child can predict what's going to happen. They don't believe that my child can read without uh, without. They vision. start questioning these abilities. Yeah. You know, because so a parent come from an intellectual level, and the child is actually demonstrating this is something more than more than more than regular intelligence. Yes. Right. So yes. what would your advice right. be for the parents? So honestly, I. My culture, uh, the American culture, people who are um, holistic minded, right? They would welcome it. It is, I've been very sad to hear that in India there is skepticism. That is mind boggling because the entire world looks to India for spiritual guidance. Pretty much anywhere, you know, and uh, we only have a handful of spiritual leaders that are doing the task, and of course, you know, people like, like, like yourself who are bearing the torch as well, you know, trying to help out. But that's, that's really sad. I, I would strongly encourage th these parents to support their kids. That is your duty, isn't it, as, as a parent? You, you, you cannot be skeptical of uh, any unknown abilities. You know what that is? You have to decide, do you love your child? Is it unconditional love? I'm sure every parent will agree that they love their kid unconditionally, right? So what, what, is, what is the spirituality behind that? 
pretty much unconditional love and fear cannot exist together. So if one cancels each other out. So if these parents are fearful, where does skepticism come from? Fear. Oh my God, what's going to happen to my child? Oh my God, you know, what is going on here? What? So anything unknown brings about fear in you. And when there is fear, you cannot say that you love your kid unconditionally. They simply cannot, ex I'm not saying this, and this has been said in the scriptures. And um, even Einstein talks about unconditional love. And I do feel that intuitive children, you know, where does unconditional love begin? It begins within. If you have no unconditional love for yourself, you are not able to inculcate that within yourself, you cannot love anybody else. And if you, if you don't have love for yourself, that is the vibration that, that you're putting out there, that I have doubts you know, about my kid or myself. Uh, I'm skeptical. I don't know if I'm a good person. I don't know if, if I deserve this, right? So those are the vibrations that you're putting out to the universe. What does the universe do? It's a mirror. It will reflect those back to you. And you will attract those experiences. And, and you will, you know, so, so this vicious cycle repeats itself. So I would strongly um, encourage the parents to just evaluate whether they're going to be fearful or they're going to have unconditional love for their children. That, that is the, the, in the important part. Yeah, are there any, uh, is there any work done in the West, you know, where people are, you know, uh, measuring intuition and such? Is there any such work that is happening? There might be, I'm sure, in Europe, but I haven't really looked into it yet, no. No, I mean, I'm, it's, it's just been, you know, um, uh, Brian and I have both been recovered out of wheelchairs and all of that uh, just a few years ago. And since then, the, the practice, like uh, what I do with autism, I'm the only practitioner in the world. So uh, what I've been doing is traveling and teaching and helping. I have uh, months and months of waiting list. My uh, appointments are now uh, moving into June. So I, I need to look into, you know, I, I, I would love to keep gaining knowledge. That was one of the reasons why I came here. And I, I gained a lot from you guys. I saw a lot. I gained a lot. It, it's very eye-opening to see this. You guys are doing fantastic work with the children. Thank you. You know, their children, their children, everybody will remember you for this. You know, the inspiration, mm -hmm. that's the only thing we want them to remember. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have to measure intuition, I mean, you know, ultimately, you know, what uh, people would like to do is, you know, measure intuition. Is, do you think there is a way to say that, okay, this is intuition? I don't really know, to be honest, right? Everybody uses intuition. What is intuition? You know, we, we use this official term, oh my gosh, intuition. What is that? It's, it's your good old gut instinct, isn't it? Um, well, you know, Hollywood calls it your spidey sense, right? Spidey sense is tingling. What is that? That's intuition, isn't it? Your sixth sense, there was a movie too, good Lord. You know, they've made movies on everything. But uh, that, that is the sixth sense or extrasensory perception is well known. It's well known for what? More than 100 years. You, you know, they, but there's always been fear. And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate because l look at what is happening on this earth. There's fear and fear and fear everywhere. And people are creating more fear because they're fearful. It's, it's a very sad, sad state of affairs. You know, people like us, we need to get together and speak about unconditional love. And that is what is going to elevate this planet to the next level, the entire planet. You know, kids like that, they not only affect their immediate surroundings, they can elevate the vibrational frequencies of the entire planet. They are, they are that powerful. All of us, all of us people who are holistic, who are intuitive, you know, communicating with plants, with animals, um, as as a collective consciousness, like I mentioned, of every living thing. That is what we need to, we need to look upon ourselves as one, as one. That's, yeah, children are the future. And like I said, Guruji has seen 100 years into the future. When we see children, are, like uh, you've seen the programs and you've seen how children are uh, I mean, becoming intuitive. So is there a way to expand their intuition? Like, how do they 
what factors will lead so, into Like, for example, now we see That's that a very good question. The, the children are just mm, keeping their eyes blindfolded. They're able to color, they're right. able to do something. So these are the activities. They just get excited right now because they are kids. But what is it that they need to be doing to go beyond this? I mean, I'm sure intuition is much beyond mm -hmm. closing your eyes and mm -hmm. doing something doing an activity. We're just trying to measure intuition, intuition. there by those activities. Mm -hmm. So how do you think that children can go to a next level? Mindful living. The, um, I don't know how much this is going to be possible uh, within the family situation, you know, as long as they're with the family, but um, it needs to be a holistic organic diet. That is very important to nourish the soul. You, you cannot have you know, kids who are overweight, kids who are not exercising. Um, natural gifts, natural abilities have to be nurtured. So mindful living and a conscious, awakened way of life. So uh, natural fibers when they were, you know, stay away from toxins, there's toxins everywhere. So, um, annual detoxification once a year especially if you have pets. If you have pets, it should be deworming twice a year. Uh, the utensils you cook in, the utensils, the, the, the pots and pans you, you cook in, the utensils you eat with, you have to make sure that toxins are not leaching into the body. Toxins will block the neurological processes. They get uh, attached to the myelin sheath, and that slows down the neurological communication between neurons. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the kids that are as bright as our kids um, have m many more neurological connections. So there's more myelin for more toxins to get attached to. So what I find is once I do a neurobiological detoxification, uh, my son gained, gained, keep in mind, 12 IQ points. So 12 IQ points is mind boggling. You know, he, he went from, so you, know, you, you see how, in spite of being intuitive, this is what was blocking him. And now he is, he is um, you know, this, this little kid on the spectrum in a wheelchair. Um, he, last year as, as a freshman in high school, that would be ninth grade, he sat with um, 12th graders and he took the International Biology Olympiad and he came in top 500 in North America, top 500 kids, and as a freshman. So these, these are the abilities of these children if they lead a mindful lifestyle. You, you, you can't be eating toxins, wearing toxins. You know, it has to be a grounded, organic lifestyle. Stay away from uh, electromagnetic frequencies. Absolutely, yes. The lungs are a primary detox organ, okay? And uh, environmental toxins get processed that way, definitely. Uh, conscious breathing, yoga breathing is, is a well-known technique amongst chronic illness, cancers, you know, uh, guided visualization. These, you know, uh, again, once again, it's unfortunate that only when you're reaching the end stage of life is when you start incorporating all of these wonderful practices. You know, did you even think if you had incorporated them from get-go, you wouldn't be at the end stage of your life at, at 40 years of age? So definitely, that is a, a, a very important role to play. You know, many of my patients, in fact, the workshops that I'm going to do at the Art of Living Retreat Center in Boone, North Carolina, it's, uh, that's what it's about. You know, it's conscious fitness. Don't go to the gym and go crazy. I mean, you know, you, you don't need that. Uh, one thing I love about Sri Sri Yoga is it's, it's not, you know, all the poses and how strong you are and let's get hot, let's get cold, nothing of that sort, you know. It's, it's a beautiful, integrated, general, slow, um, but, you know, very deep yoga that, that is uh, almost like meditation, you know. It's, it's so beautiful for the soul, what I've observed. I wish I had time to take the course, but uh, it's, it's wonderful. So yeah, definitely, you, you have to live a, a toxin-free life. No fast food, home-cooked meals. 
Um, in the U.S., uh, I, I usually advocate, you know, gluten-free and sugar-free because there's a lot of pesticides, herbicides in, in um, almost everything, everything conventional. So my, my personal, I'm vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free. But I'm, I'm, I was raised vegan, first of all. And then it, I started incorporating all of these things. And, and you know, everything is homemade. Even the ketchup is homemade. We don't, we don't get anything from anywhere. But unfortunately, that's the world where, where we live in. You know, it's, it's, it's all preservatives and fast food. And did you guys hear the story about the chicken nuggets like plastic? No? OK. Somebody, yeah, I, I don't know if, uh, oh, okay, someone sneezed. I thought somebody laughed because they knew. Uh, I'm not going to name the fast food chain, but I think you'll understand. But, you know, somebody did an experiment. I think it was in the U.K. or the U.S. It's on YouTube. They took chicken nuggets from this fast food place, and they left it out on, on, on the countertop in the kitchen. And then they made homemade chicken nuggets from scratch, and they left it out on the countertop. Guess what happened? We, uh, and after a week, they checked. One whole week, right? Just their room temperature on the countertop. The homemade chicken nuggets were all moldy. The fast food chicken nuggets were brand new. What the heck is that? You know, it's, it's plastic. Like, can you imagine you eat that? And can you imagine how long it sits in the gut, you know, without your, uh, uh, the, the beneficial microorganisms in your gut being able to digest that? It's very sad. You know, I, I saw one ad for French fries. That's on YouTube. We have 14 chemicals in our French fries so that each French fry is the famous one that, that, that you know, we are known for. We, we, we do 14 steps, 14 chemicals. It's just potatoes, for God's sake. You know, just <laughs> fry them and eat them. You know, but yeah. logic and that could be one reason why we resist listening to the intuitive part I would agree yes yeah sure the whole thing okay <laughs> okay From your experience of your own intuitive thoughts, do you find that the intuitive thoughts are counter logic? And could that be one reason why people resist listening to the intuitive mind? Because we are trained to listen to logic. We're trained to accept logic. Yes. Logic is your ego mind. Me, 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 self, self-preservation, uh, all about yourself. That is your ego mind. Intuition is soul talk. That's, that's where, that's been my experience. That is, that is your um, supraconscious mind trying, trying to communicate to you. Yes, it defies earth logic or, you know, what, I, what I'd like to say 3D logic sometimes. Why? Because there is something called as divine timing. You and I discussed about timing just, just a little while back. You know, it's very frustrating. It's often... You know, there's a lot of angst and depression and, you know, I want what I want now. That's your ego mind talking. I want what I want now. And your, your intuitive mind will say, you know, it's probably not worth it. Why don't you wait for what is coming next? Just wait. You, you, will, you will reap the rewards of your efforts. Just give it a little bit more time. But unfortunately, in this modern world, time is a very... Um, I don't know, scarce commodity in most people's lives, you know. And um, so I'm, I'm, I'm like jumping ahead. But uh, speaking of time, you know, I, I could lecture that this, it's all day. But um, there, time needs to be fluid. When you move to higher dimensions, you know, Einstein talks about fourth and fifth dimensions as well. There is no time. There really is no time. There is past, present, and future happening all at once. And uh, based on, on the, the choices you make, 
is uh, whatever future will play out. There's so many Hollywood movies that have been made on these concepts. There's so many science fiction space shows that are made on this concept, right? Um, I mean, take Star Wars, right? The, the, the Yugo also talks about this. He does? Yeah. yeah. So the uh, Star Trek, the, the, the scanning device they use, what is that? You know, that is a bioenergetic scanner. I'm using that in my clinic now. You know, so it's, it's, the, it's just that people think that's a show and they go with it. That's really, I mean, that is all quantum physics. And that exists. You know, there are, um, Dr. Uh, Goswami is renowned astrophysicist, quantum physicist, and he's absolutely amazing. He's, he's one of my professors. And um, it, it's worth listening to his, uh, his lectures on quantum. But uh, where was I? So time, yeah. So listening to your intuition can sometimes be scary. So you know that you need to work on, what do you need to work on when there's fear? You work on love. So you work on unconditional love for yourself, for what is within you then you will develop confidence in what is within you and you will you know, pay it mind. Honestly, if you've seen or if you've benefited from your intuitive abilities, you will never go back. It's, it's not, it's very hard. It, it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifices to be able to live a mindful, intuitive lifestyle. But that is a conscious choice we make. That is, that is what it is. Uh, intuition helps you make choices that are for your greater good. It may not be for your immediate, it may appear not to be for immediate gratification, right? Uh, this is the, the same, you know, allopathic and holistic approach. Uh, I, I have, um, you know, uh, cancer, so I'm gonna do chemotherapy, okay? But why did you get the cancer? How do you know it's not gonna come back? So you, you need to do detoxification. I, I, I was speaking to the fantastic doctors at, at, at you know, Shri Shri Ayurvedic Hospital. They're doing amazing work with herbs, with uh, um, cancer. You know, they're able to avoid uh, radiation and chemo. I'm able to as well, you know, but with, with my methodology and, and they are using their method. It's fantastic. You, you gotta look at the root cause. That's what I, I tell people when they come to my practice. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So if intuitive people can cultivate, uh, cultivate that in their head, I think that'll be helpful. And you are gonna be different, you know what? I mean, in, in fact, you know, uh, I, I think different is great. Who wants to be normal? I don't wanna be normal. <laughs> I think, is there a part of the brain which is, you know, contributes to intuition? Like for example, hippocampus contributes to short-term memory. Mm -hmm. Hypothalamus, yes. Yeah, so, is there a part of the brain which, if it is developed, then you can say, okay, this child could be intuitive, something in that sort? Right. I don't think any research has been done, but there is uh, some related research. First of all, you know, your your thalamus in the brain is known as your, as you might know, your sensory relay station. Right. So that is one, and then your uh, cerebellum, right? There is a, an area in the cerebellum that's called as neocerebellum, right? Uh, the neocerebellum, the flocculonodular lobe in the cerebellum, they, they operate on a servo mechanism. Y you guys are scientists, so you might know what, what a servo is. That is a, a very highly developed skill. And what, that, what they do is almost like you know, what research scientists do with um, uh, medical research is, is when they do a, logistical, um, a logistic regression analysis which is, you know, which has predictive value, right? So the cerebellum, the neocerebellum, which is, which is newly developed in the humans, right? It is able to do uh, predictive. How do you think, you know, like, um, suppose someone is throwing a ball at you, right? So based on posture, based on um, the expression on the face, et cetera, your body will automatically recruit the motor units needed for the muscles to anticipate the force, the speed, and the velocity of the ball that you think is coming. So this is the anticipatory skills that the body has. So th these are very advanced skills. So those are the areas that could contribute to intuition as well, you know, predictions, et cetera. Then, um, 
in my research, and not, not really my research, but in, in my study of uh, children with autoimmune neurological problems in the brain of infectious origin, uh, the immune system goes through what is called as molecular mimicry. You know, it thinks that the part of the brain is a germ, and it attacks that part of the brain. So uh, what happens in these children is a, a wonderful scientist, Madeline Cunningham, uh, developed what is called as the Cunningham panel, and uh, she's looking at anti-neuronal antibodies, meaning you know immune system antibodies that are attacking the brain cells or the neurons, and one of them is anti-tubulin antibodies, and you know a European research shows that tubulin is what connects your conscious mind with your subconscious mind. And they haven't mentioned supraconscious because that is a newer quantum bioquant physics concept, but tubulin is often attacked in these children with, with autoimmune. And um, as you start developing, even in my own son, as you start in incorporating you know, meditative practices, right, pranayam breathing, um, these antibodies, they decrease, and um, which, which is, you know, self, I, I have a patient whose antitubulin went down from 32,000 to 2,000. So I can't say that, that, you know, we developed this intuitive process. I can just say that, that you know, we expanded his mind. Mm -hmm. I was reading an article, you know, it said that, you know, uh, like you said, right, how we judge the the body is going to hit me or no. Yeah. They use, that, you know, they, they use the term heuristics. Yes, exactly, yes. Heuristics. So yeah. we have got various of these. And in fact, in our day-to-day -day lives, we use all of this. Like when we are crossing a road, especially in India, you know, there are so many vehicles zipping through. <laughs> we are actually using a kind of, you know, our heuristics or which we could probably say is intuition. Intuition. It's very, you know, that, that there's a gray line between, you know, logic and intuition. Correct. It, it just, you know, it flows. It flows. It flows and people, yeah. Yeah. you know, I mean, it, it takes awareness, right? What does it mean? You, you need to live in an awakened state. Not many do. Not many do, you know. Most people you observe are either constantly talking or constantly engaging or on their phone or something. They're, they're, they're occupied. You don't see too many people sitting quiet. Uh, you know, as, as a regular practice. I, I don't see a, a lot of people living an, an awakened life, you know. They miss the details, they miss the beauty. You know, they're walking through a garden, blah, 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 with their friends, right? What about the birds? What about the trees? What about the gift of nature? You know, you just be quiet and enjoy that. Breathe. But, um, you know, deep breathing. Most people, how many people you know, you know, do actual diaphragmatic breathing? unless they are doing their meditative practice, right? It should be routine. Lungs are important. It, they are important detoxification organs, right? So because people don't stop doing, they keep doing, you know, and, and doing is what, what is their undoing. <laughs> Dr. Jody, thank you so much. You're welcome. Your time. Uh, this is going to be great. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Things were very well put, and some of them were eye opening as well. Thank you so much. Oh, you're most welcome. Appreciate it. In fact, you know, I was reading an article which says that we human beings are not rational at all. <laughs> Seriously. All the, the decisions that we take on a day to day basis are very irrational. Very irrational. They mostly come from the instinctual or the intuitive right. mind. Right. But we are not aware of it. Right, yeah, it's because it becomes so routine, it's, it's like, you know, it's accepted a little bit more, but nobody digs in deeper. Lack of time, lack of interest. Most importantly, lack of awareness. Awareness is a skill. Because it's 